The San Francisco 49ers and Los Angeles Rams met for a divisional matchup that had early importance. Both teams have started 2024 slower than they would like to. And with Seattle off to such a good start up north, it was essential to come out of this game with a win. Welcome to Josh's Football Breakdowns, where we don't tell you what you're seeing, we let the film tell us what we're seeing. And we saw a lot of twists and turns in this game, and plenty to look at on the film, so let's get right into it. The 49ers open the game with a strong drive and are threatening to score early. San Francisco has been running the ball well, so here they fake the toss to Isaac Garendo. With Juwan Jennings pretending to block, this draws in the defense before Jennings would head uncovered into the end zone. Purdy makes his first read to Brandon Ayuk, but he's locked up, so he resets his feet and moves on to his second read, Juwan Jennings, and Brock probably can't believe his eyes and wastes no time getting him the football. With the 49ers up 7-0, they would get the ball back and make immediate use of almost the exact same play. And Curl just brings them down after a gain of 34 yards. Wow. To help sell the run fake, the entire offensive line moves to their right, including the left tackle, Trent Williams. So who then is gonna block the defensive end, Byron Young? Well, it's a difficult assignment, and here it goes to Eric Schaubert, who comes all the way across and throws a key block, giving Brock Purdy time to throw this football. Here the 49ers put Jordan Mason in motion, and Troy Reader doesn't go with him. Instead, the defense widens, telling the 49ers that the Rams are in a zone defense. When Juwan Jennings doubles back to the inside, he moves into the zone of Roseboom, who steps up to pick him up, turning loose Eric Schaubert. Now, Schaubert is eventually picked up by Curl, but not before Brock Purdy can get him the football. And it's another nice gain for the 49ers. And here we can see Curl is set up to take away the inside. So Juwan Jennings simply goes to the outside. And from this angle, we get a great look at Jared Verse, the Rams rookie defensive end, who absolutely smokes Colton McKivitz on the speed rush. Unfortunately, he loses his footing the Rams also run a stunt and it is not handled well by the 49ers offensive line. Somehow Brock Purdy senses this and is able to escape the pocket. San Francisco is off to a tremendous start. They lead 14 to nothing, and they would get the ball back again. The Rams would really like to put a stop to this, so here they send a blitz, leaving just one safety back deep. And check out the stem of the route of Brandon Ayuk. It looks like he's going deep. 
With just one safety on the field, Kobe Durant does the right thing and gives Ayuk a lot of space, allowing Ayuk to come back to the football. Did the 49ers leave extra blockers in to pick up the blitz? Not really. Eric Schaubert chips, but then goes out for a pass route. Jordan Mason would also head downfield for a pass. And as a result, this blitz almost gets home to Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy and the 49er offense seems to be humming, but later on in the drive, they would face a key third down and four. LA once again would put five men at the line of scrimmage, but Troy Reader is going to cover Kyle Juszczyk. The Rams would also devote two defenders to the tight end, taking away any easy completions over the middle for a first down. This would leave just one safety on the field for the Rams, and when the 49ers threaten to go deep, he correctly drops back to cover the route, opening up Brandon Ayuk over the middle. But turn your attention to the pocket. Once again, we see Verse has gotten off an outstanding speed rush, forcing Brock Purdy to scramble. Purdy gets the ball to Ayuk, and Ayuk can't quite come down with the catch. For the first time today, the Rams' defense would hold, and this would be a bit of a turning point in the game. Ideally, this football should be a little bit out in front of Brandon Ayuk, but he seems to get both hands on it and just isn't able to come up with the catch. Credit to Tredavious White for knocking this ball loose, but I'd like to see Ayuk hang on to that one. So the Rams take over with an opportunity to get back in the game, but here they're facing a third down and eight. Obviously, San Francisco would like to prevent this, so here they take a little bit of a gamble and send a six-man blitz leaving just one safety back deep. And here the Rams catch Isaac Yadam a little bit flat-footed. Stafford gets the ball to 2-2 Atwell, and he's off to the races, and he's finally brought down, but not before he picks up 24 yards on the play. Wow. Just when the Rams had to get something going on offense, they did. What about that big blitz San Francisco sent? Well, check out Ronnie Rivers, who comes all the way across and picks up one of the best defenders in the league. Fred Warner. Boom. LA knows they need to build off of that play. We're about halfway through the second quarter and they still haven't scored. They've got to get it going. And I'm going to show you guys where the tackle box is. Now, some of you will know where I'm going with this, but just go ahead and remember where these lines are, you know, in your mind here, because Malik Collins gets off a great pass rush. So Stafford decides to throw this ball away, and he doesn't just throw it away. He chucks this thing in the stands from the far hash. I mean, oh my goodness, what an arm. Are you kidding me? But he's still inside the tackle box. This would be a penalty for intentional grounding, and penalties are drive killers, and this would be significant because the Rams would be unable to pick up a first down at a time in the game when they really needed to. So LA would be forced to punt, and they kind of casually stand around, direct snap, direct snap, it's a fake, and they would pick up the first down, wow. Now, after the game, Kyle Shanahan said they were in punt safe. The call here was punt safe, and we can see George Odom trying to get into position, but the Rams snapped the ball so quickly, it's already too late. D. Winters and Chris Connolly are also slow to react to the play. A shrewd call by the Rams coaches and perfectly executed by the players, and it's enough to get them a first down and keep this drive going. 
and suddenly that drop by Brandon Ayuk is starting to loom over the 49ers. Moving ahead in the drive, the Rams would threaten, and here they send Kieran Williams to the outside against Devondre Campbell, who has not been great in pass coverage. So Campbell runs over to take away the play, but then Williams cuts back to the inside on the Texas route. But fortunately for the 49ers, Talanoa Hafunga has returned from injury, and here the outstanding safety is waiting to lay the hit on Kieran Williams. And Williams somersaults over him into the end zone. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. What an unbelievable play. Unreal. And remember, the Niners open the game with the ball, meaning the Rams get the ball to start the second half. Facing a third down and five, we're going to look at the route of Colby Parkinson. Now there's a lot of contact between him and the defender here, and I think this is a good no call. Either way, Parkinson fights for leverage, and then Stafford makes an outstanding throw. Well, look at the placement of that football, that is great. And then Parkinson can't hang on to the ball. It's another key drop in this game, and yes, once again, this game would turn on a dropped pass. And credit to Jair Brown for knocking that ball out. But again, just like with Brandon Ayuk, you'd like to see Parkinson come down with that. I don't want to make it a bigger deal than it is. But it does mean the 49ers will get the ball up seven points with a chance to build on their lead. And Jordan Mason would continue to gash teams on the ground. Jake Brendel would snap the football and then fire off into the second level. Dominic Pooney would block the nose tackle while Colton McKivitz picks up the end. It's a very simple play, but a lot of football involves doing simple things well. After another gash from Mason, the 49ers would be facing third down and four at the 31-yard line. And here we see just an outstanding route by Juwan Jennings, cutting to the outside, appearing to have the first down, and looking at Brock Purdy for the football. Getting the rookie safety for the Rams, Cameron Kitchens, to react to the play before burning him with the double move. Eleven catches, 175 yards, and three touchdown receptions for Jawan Jennings in this game. The 49ers go back up by two touchdowns, leading at 21-7 halfway through the third quarter. Facing a first and 15, the Rams decide to fake the handoff, and they even pull the guard to help sell the fake. This has the desired effect, holding the San Francisco defense. And the 49ers really seem to sense run here. Look at all these guys they have down in the box. But keep your eyes on Tutu Atwell. Atwell makes a great move here, taking just one step to the inside, but it's enough to throw off Isaac Yadam. In fact, watch Yadam's feet You'll see little plastic pellets fly up here from the artificial turf. Yadam crashes into Atwell, the flags come out for pass interference, and Yadam knows he's been burned.
What do you need to throw the ball deep? Time. The Rams would cap off the drive with Kieran Williams, and just like that, L.A. has responded, bringing it back to a seven-point game in the third quarter. But with Jordan Mason gashing the Rams on the ground, the 49ers would also exploit the fake handoff, holding the defense. When Brandon Ayuk goes deep, he would take the corner and the safety with him, opening up Juwan Jennings. Jawan Jennings goes up, contested catch, and he comes down with it. What a day Jawan Jennings is having. The officials probably would have called pass interference if he didn't come down with that. I don't see any flags on the field, but we're going to pretend they would have done the right thing here. It's a moot point anyway. This catch reminds me a lot of the one Brandon Lloyd had in 2014. Take a look, because I was there. Later on in the drive, Jawan Jennings would get bumped off his route, but he would still make his way to the hole in the zone and Brock Purdy would find him with a pinpoint pass. Because the timing of the play was thrown off, we would see an extra shuffle from Brock Purdy's feet. Man, what a strike. And here we would get to kind of an interesting moment in the game I haven't seen talked about a whole lot. The 49ers would be facing a third down and one. Now they're inside the red zone here. I, my thought is if you have a third down and one, why not take a shot at the end zone here? It's a great chance to catch the defense off guard. Once you get down into the red zone, you kind of want to take as many shots at that end zone as you can. If you don't get it, you can always go for it on fourth and one if you want to, or kick the field goal. In any event, they run the quarterback sneak with Brock Purdy. He gains significant yardage, but they spot him short, bringing up a fourth down. And then they run the quarterback sneak again. Now, if we're talking about quarterback health, I don't like running these guys on the sneak back to back. I don't know if this is related or not, but we would find out in the coming days that Brock Purdy is day-to-day -day with back soreness. A few plays later, they would be facing a third and short again, third in inches this time. And again, why not take a shot at the end zone? Okay, you didn't do it the first time. You've had two opportunities now to do it. Neither time the 49ers take a shot. And I think that's a mistake. You're getting multiple opportunities at the end zone here. You should at least take one of them Think of it this way. We all know who wins the game in the end. Imagine if after it's all said and done, the Rams told the 49ers, we're going to give you one extra free shot at the end zone here inside the red zone. Do you think the 49ers would take it? And then we'd run into some issues with the play design. We can see pretty clearly that there aren't enough blockers on the left side. Now, what could the 49ers have done differently? Well, we see Kyle Juszczyk here. They could have used him as a lead blocker and used Chris Connolly to clean up the backside of the play. Now, does that mean that the 49ers made a mistake with their play design? No, not necessarily. It's possible they didn't know they were going to get this defensive look from the Rams, or the play could have been designed this way intentionally so that they could run to either side of the formation and just gone whichever way they felt more comfortable. I will say that, to me, it's pretty telling that the Rams knew the 49ers were not going to pass on this play. They seemed to know Kyle Shanahan pretty well. They sold out to stop the run, and the 49ers lost yardage on the play. They did not have the opportunity to go for it on fourth down then, so they had to settle for the field goal. I mean, what do you guys think? You know, uh, Let me know what your perspective is on this, because I, I think I want to see 
the lay of the land here and, and kind of see how everybody's feeling about this. Let me know what you think in the comments about how the 49ers approached both of these third and fourth down situations. Obviously, once the 49ers lost yardage on the play, it was imperative to kick the field goal to make it a two-score game. So the Rams have the work cut out for them. But here we see probably one of the most egregious defensive snaps of the game. Just there's so many mistakes on this play. I don't think I can actually show you all of them. So I'm going to show you the mistakes that are relevant to the result of the play. The Rams start off with a fake handoff. Devondre Campbell steps up and Diamador Lenore kind of gets caught peeking in the backfield a little bit here. Diamador and Devondre scramble to get back in position. Lenore does have help from Isaac Yadam here. Because he has help, I would like to see Talanoa Hafunga turn his attention to the other side of the field. He doesn't, but Hafunga does do one thing right on this play, which is to get depth. Now Demarcus Robinson does come wide open in the middle of the field. Why? Well, couple reasons. For one thing, Devondre Campbell doesn't get enough depth. Now, believe it or not, I'm actually not pinning on the, this on him at all. It, it's really difficult for any linebacker, not named Fred Warner, to get enough depth on a play like this. The real problem here is that Jair Brown is supposed to be going with Demarcus Robinson. Mooney Ward is covering the deep route on the play. When both Jair Brown and Ward go with 2-2 Atwell, there's absolutely nobody left to cover Demarcus Robinson. And then Hafunga misses the tackle. 32 yard gain on the play and file this one away for later because we're gonna see this same play again later in the game. The Rams have had some injuries on their offensive line, but give them credit here because for the most part, the 49er pass rush was ineffective in this game. We're about halfway through the fourth quarter now. The 49ers are still up 10, and here the Rams take my advice. It's third down and one, and they're going to take a shot at the end zone. They don't pick it up. They could kick the field goal here, but they make the decision to go for it on fourth down. And that, that's what I like about taking that shot on third down. You still have flexibility with your next play. Case in point, they pick up the first down. Now I said the 49er pass rush was lackluster, so here they send an overload blitz, sending three pass rushers into an area with only two pass blockers. Stafford takes the sack, and the 49er defense finally comes up with a stop, holding LA to a field goal. The 49ers take over, still up by a touchdown now, and they call a play that's worked for them all game long, faking the handoff, drawing in the defense, and then getting the ball to Jawan Jennings down the field. Why does this play work again? Well, think about the game situation. The Rams know that the 49ers would like very much to run out the clock, and they've got Jordan Mason to do it. They have to take the fake seriously. But then on the next play, disaster would strike. Garendo has to take this cutback lane and take on Roseboom one-on-one. -on -one. He might only gain a few yards here, but more importantly, he'll keep the clock running. And credit to Quentin Lake, beating San Francisco to the edge. Garendo does not take the cutback, and Kyle Juszczyk feels like he has to hold. We see the flags come out for holding, and this is the worst possible situation for San Francisco. Now they lose yardage, and the clock is stopped at the same time. That play cannot happen in this point in the game. Just cannot happen. Unacceptable. And then we see Brock Purdy staring at Brandon Ayuk, who's apparently streaking wide open to the end zone on a busted coverage, and he doesn't throw him the football. Why? Well, after the game, Kyle Shanahan said Brandon Ayuk's route called for him to sit up. Brock was expecting that. He sort of 
in a rare instance here for Brock Purdy, he doesn't trust his eyes and doesn't throw the football. He plays it conservative here. He does get a completion to Jawan Jennings in bounds to keep the clock running. After another play, the 49ers would be forced to settle for a long Jake Moody field goal. If he makes it though, it's a two score game and the 49ers win, but this is 55 yards. It is not a gimme in the NFL. You can tell how far away they are. The kick is up, it's up, and he just misses it. It's no good. Now look, I'm not expecting Jake Moody to make a 55 yard field goal every time. That would be ridiculous. It would be nice to see him make one of these clutch kicks at some point. Now, keep in mind, the 49ers are up by seven points here, a full touchdown. But look at the body language of the Rams and the 49ers as they leave the field. This, to me, this is telling. Now, because the field goal was no good, the Rams get the ball at the spot of the kick. So they start this drive with outstanding field position. And think back to when I told you to remember that play that the Rams ran earlier, because here they run the exact same play again, with Demarcus Robinson coming across on the dig route and Tutu Atwell on the go route. LA knows that San Francisco did not handle this correctly the first time, so they call the play again, and again we see a mistake from the 49ers. If you remember back, I said the one thing Talanoa Hafunga did right was that he got depth on the play. Well, the 49ers in this game situation have put two safeties back deep. So this time it's Jair Brown instead of Talanoa Hafunga, and he does not get depth like he should. Instead, he steps up to take away the shorter route to Robinson, giving up the go route to Atwell and hanging Mooney Ward out to dry. The Rams cap off the drive with another Kieran Williams touchdown, and just like that, they have come all the way back to tie this game. LA showed a lot of heart in this game, I gotta say. So now the 49ers take over needing to score to win the game. LA takes a little bit of a gamble here, sending a blitz. It's a gamble because now there's only one safety back deep. If a receiver for the 49ers beats his man deep, for example, the Rams could be burned for a long play, and that's exactly what Ronnie Bell does. And we would see a tremendous throw from Brock Purdy. Oh, the ball hits him in the hands and he drops it. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Tell me this isn't one of the best throws you're going to see a quarterback make. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable throw and just that cannot happen at the professional level. It just cannot happen. So the 49ers have to punt to the Rams now with a chance for LA to win the game. It is imperative that they make this tackle. Xavier Smith gets loose, he's down the sideline, and he is finally knocked out of bounds by the kicker, and LA is in tremendous shape here to win the game. Let's go back to the snap. Now some of you may disagree with me here, but the missed tackle, whatever. It's a difficult open field tackle. The real thing here is that Jake Tongas must maintain contained to the outside. Instead, like a five-year-old soccer player, he runs towards the ball, and credit to Smith for getting to the outside. And 
and the Rams had a play ready for this situation, sending Colby Parkinson wide to the outside, matching him up one-on-one -on -one against Devondre Campbell. And inexplicably, the 49ers give Campbell no help on the play, Hafunga seems to be mesmerized, and Campbell has no choice but to clobber Parkinson. Flags everywhere, and the Rams are in business for an immediate field goal to win the game. And it's up to the Rams rookie kicker, Joshua Cardi, to make a clutch kick, and it is good. And the Rams are going to win the game. Wow. Now, let's take a look here from this angle. Okay, here's the rule. The clock doesn't stop until the ball hits the ground. The NFL has been all over the place over the years with this. We can actually see the ball here, and the clock mysteriously stops. So the 49ers are going to right or wrong, get one last desperation shot. They're going to get sort of two extra seconds here that they maybe shouldn't have. Well, hats off to the LA Rams. You know, they really struggled the first two games of this season. And at one point in this game, it looked like they were probably going to lose not only the game, but, you know, maybe even their shot at a division title. I know it's only week three, but going down 0-3 and, and falling three games behind... A Seattle Seahawks team that's doing very well up north would have been really tough for the Rams. But credit to L.A. They hung in there. They did not give up at any point. Uh, Matt Stafford had really, I think, a very strong day. Made clutch plays, keeping the Rams in this game. And the 49ers, on the other hand, this is a disaster. You know, they had problems in all three phases of the game. Brandon Ayuk and Ronnie Bell had critical drops on offense. The defense seemed unable to come up with a stop. The secondary is a total disaster, and they're getting no pass rush whatsoever. And special teams, year after year, always seems to rear its ugly head. The 49ers cannot seem to figure that aspect of the game out in the Kyle Shanahan era. And if you've played football at pretty much any level, you have no doubt had a coach tell you how important special teams is. Some coaches even say it is equal and on par with the offense and defensive phases of the game, a sentiment I agree with. You cannot win the game without special teams, and the 49ers proved it. Well, where do these teams go from here? The Rams travel to Chicago to take on a Bears team that seems to have trouble finding its footing. LA has a real opportunity to get back to 500 and right back in this division race. And the NFC across the board looks a little bit weaker this year. So there are opportunities. And remember, we're in the modern era. Seven teams from each conference make the playoffs now. It's a realistic possibility for the Rams, especially if they can find a way to win these gritty games like this. San Francisco hosts a New England Patriots team at home that they should be able to beat on paper. Jacoby Brissett has really struggled, but so has the 49ers defense. They've got to get things figured out, especially on that back end. Worth noting here that the Patriots played on Thursday night football, so they're coming off 10 days rest. We talked before the season about the rest advantage teams were going to have against San Francisco this year. So they've had some time to prepare for the Niners. Can San Francisco get it sorted out before that game? Well, they're going to have to because as we talked about, the Seahawks are red hot up north. They're 3-0. and They've got a difficult Monday night matchup in Detroit. But they beat Detroit in Detroit last year. They can definitely do it again. And if they go to 4-0, the pressure is really going to be on not only the 49ers, but also the Rams and the Cardinals as well. All right. I want to thank all my new subscribers. We gained 23 subscribers last week. Thank you so much. And 27 of you decided to share this video. Those shares really helped me out. So if you like what you see here, please consider subscribing. Share with your friends or post in your favorite group. It helps me out and I really appreciate it. And as always, I want to take some time here to thank those of you who have gone the extra mile to help support this channel. You guys make doing this week in and week out possible for me. So thank you so much and an extra special thanks to our Patreon supporters. You guys mean the world to me. You are an essential part of this team. 
Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. All right, it's going to be Rams at Bears and Patriots at Niners. Those are going to be great games. I can't wait to see them. I, I don't know what's going to happen in those games, but you know, you know we are going to be here to break down that film, and I will see you guys then.